Hi, I'm Darren Ferrugia and welcome. Firstly, I'm gonna start this video by saying, I'm really sorry that I didn't upload a video last week. Um, in fact, I think it's actually the first time that I've let two weeks go by without a video, which means that, you know, I, I missed out on one week. There's a reason for that. So um, I usually film my videos on Thursdays. I edit them on Thursdays. I upload them on Fridays, usually. Wednesday, I get a call in the morning. Uh, Can you come to Adelaide? Uh, we need you today. So um, I had to get some symbols and put a suit in a bag, get on a plane straight away, and I flew to Adelaide for two days to do some shows to cover for a drummer who was sick. And then I flew back from Adelaide, and from the airport back in Melbourne, I had to go straight to a gig, um, did a gig, and then after the gig, I went home and stayed up for a bit to watch the cricket. And then I woke up early on Saturday morning, about six o'clock, and went to the airport to do a gig in Brisbane, did a big gig in Brisbane, flew straight back, um, unwell, and then I'd been sick for a few days. So that's my excuse, that's my sob story. Um, thanks for your understanding. So anyway, while I was away in New York a few weeks ago, I started to think a lot about getting my day off to a good start. There is a saying that I've heard said by quite a few people, and that is if you conquer the morning, you conquer the day. And in fact, what I was doing was mostly squandering my mornings. And so the rest of the day was kind of less productive. I just felt like, oh, you know, I haven't really done what I wanted to do. So what I promised myself that I would do is get up at a reasonable hour. You know, I am a musician after all, but get up at a reasonable hour, do some practice from eight o'clock, after practice, go to the gym, come back and it's still morning, right? And I've achieved two important things. So what I wanna to talk to you about today is that morning routine, that morning practice routine, what I do when I first get out of bed. So here we go. The first thing I do when I wake up is I make myself a black coffee. I'm intermittent fasting at the moment, so I don't actually have my first meal till about one or two o'clock in the afternoon. So I get up, have a coffee, put on my gym gear, so I'm dressed and I'm ready to go to the gym when I need to. I'll bring my coffee down into this room and I'll get started with my practice. So here's my morning practice routine. Now the first thing I'm gonna say about this routine is it's purely a physical and technical practice. It's, I'm not doing anything for grooves here. I'm just working on my technique, my hand technique, my bass drum technique and coordination and it's I would say that it's probably more about just getting these fundamental things taken care of right at the start of the day. I'm fortunate in the sense that I don't have a day job and I know it's, it's, I know that it's a luxury, so I don't have a day job. And so that means that I do have the mornings to myself. So I just put this little routine together. It goes for about 40 or 45 minutes and I wanna share this with you. now. Some of the things in this routine I have actually shared with you. So I'm going to leave links to the videos that relate to those aspects of my practice routine so that you can check them out if you haven't already. So the first thing that I do is I do a hand technique routine which consists of working on a single stroke roll using the 531 method and then I'll play double stroke rolls and um, a single paradiddle. And I do this every day, of course. Um, what I do with this routine is I take the metronome marking up by one BPM uh, every week. So at the moment, I'm probably hovering at about 146, 147. If I uh, have a bad week where I don't really get to practice that much, I don't put the tempo up. That's kind of a way of punishing myself, I guess. My morning practice routine for my hand technique is a video that I've covered. So I'm gonna leave a link to that in the description below. That takes about 15 minutes to get through. That's my first 15 minutes of my practice. The second thing that I do in my practice routine is the bass drum endurance exercise. And I did a video on that a couple of weeks ago as well. So again, I'm gonna leave a link to that in the description below. So I do that, I focus on accuracy, I play 
quarter notes with my hi-hat as I demonstrated in that previous video that I did. And that's kind of like the first step towards some of the coordinated type of practice. I like to think of practicing as you know, you might be working on a specific exercise, but it may involve other elements that work on other things too. So for example, if I'm playing the endurance exercise, the bass drum endurance exercise, I'm not just working on my bass drum, but the very fact that I'm using my left foot, now it's a four-way coordination exercise. So I like to incorporate things like that just to allow me to work on more than one thing at a time. So that's part two, the bass drum endurance exercise. Then beyond that, I work on my rim shots. Now, I did a video on this as well. I work on this because it's something that really annoys me. And if I let it go, if I don't work on it, then I start to notice that, you know, my rim shots become a little inconsistent. So um, I've done a video on my rim shot routine. I'm gonna link that below, but I'm gonna demonstrate one thing that I'm doing differently. So the thing that I'm doing differently is actually how I'm practicing this with a metronome. I play this with a metronome at 80 beats per minute, which is this tempo. What I'm doing differently is actually playing with the metronome whereby the metronome is playing the second and fourth sixteenth note of each beat, which makes it a lot more difficult to play with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the metronome. You're going to hear the downbeat plus the second and fourth sixteenth note of each beat. So what you're going to hear rhythmically is this one, two, three, four. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. Let's have a listen to the metronome. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove that downbeat. So we're only hearing the second and fourth sixteenth note of each beat. So I'm gonna play along to that. So when I play this particular exercise, what I'm gonna do is start off with a foot pattern, which is basically a samba foot pattern. And what I wanna do is get that foot pattern locked into the, uh, the metronome, doing this you know, crazy offbeat thing. And then I will add the hands. So when I play with the click this way, it really forces me to listen to what the click's doing. So that way I can make whatever minor adjustments I need to make in order to lock in with that. So what I do is I start the metronome, have a listen to it for a few bars, and then once I feel comfortable, I'll add the bass drum pattern, which is basically a samba. And then once that feels locked into the metronome, then I'll practice the uh, rim shot exercise. Here we go. Now that's still a tough exercise for me, but um, it's it's definitely worth practicing. And and you know I, I do actually play this for much longer than I would here, you know, demonstrating this for you. So I do give myself time to make whatever little adjustments I need to make so that I can get more consistency from those rim shots. So that's the third part of my practice routine. That's the rim shot exercise. And just for the sake of not burning my ears out during practice, I'm just using one of these tortillas on the snare drum. Okay, finally, the last part of my practice routine is just working on the doubles on my bass drum. So the first part of working on my bass drum is the endurance exercise that I demonstrated in a previous video, which I just spoke about, but I also want to work on my doubles. I feel that my doubles are a bit of a weak point in my bass drum technique. So the thing I focus on when I do this is making sure that there's a good volume between the first and second note. I don't want there to be so much disparity between the two notes in terms of volume. I don't want the first note of the double to be too soft. So I'm just working on getting those doubles 
very articulated. So the way I do this is fairly simple. I'm playing a very simple pattern, which is right, left, kick, kick, right, left, kick, kick as 16th notes. And I'm adding quarter notes to my hi-hat foot. Now, the way I practice this is using the 5-3-1 method. Again, if you're not familiar with the 5-3-1 method, I've done a video on that as well. So I'm gonna link that in the description as well. So I'm starting at 150 beats per minute and I'm playing this exercise for five minutes. I'm moving my hands around the kit because as I do that, there are little shifts in my balance which may affect uh, my accuracy and my coordination. So for example, if I move my hands from this snare drum position over to this second tom, it can cause a little bit of an imbalance uh, physically, which can lead to a bit of inaccuracy. So I really try to exploit those weak weaknesses and try to correct them as I'm practicing. So what I'm gonna do is just give you an example of what this sounds like at 150. Normally I would play this for five minutes. So I'll do that at 150 beats per minute for five minutes. Then I'll take the metronome up to 155, faster by five beats per minute, and I'll play this for three minutes. So here's 155. And then finally, I'll do this at 160. So again, I've taken the metronome up by five beats per minute and I'll play this at 160 for one minute. Here's what that sounds like. I am working on a variation on this exercise. The pattern itself is not that difficult to understand, but it's actually quite difficult to coordinate. So I'm gonna share that with you probably in next week's video if I can get it together. So that's basically my routine in the morning. Rudiments, first up on the pad, and then I'll work on the bass drum endurance exercise. Then the third thing I do is the rim shots exercise using that kind of weird uh, metronome situation thing going on there. And then finally, I'll work on those doubles on my bass drum. Like I said, this whole routine takes me about, you know, 40 to 45 minutes. A few other things to consider. I do take the metronome markings up once I feel that I'm playing accurately, comfortably, and I'm relaxed. So for example, with the bass drum endurance exercise, I'm working on that at about 70 to 80 beats per minute probably around 70 at this stage, just going for accuracy and real consistency. With the rim shots exercise, I'm playing those at 80 at this stage. I'm still not happy with how they're going. And with the doubles on the bass drum that I just demonstrated, I'm doing those at 150. So that's 150 for five minutes, 155 for three minutes, and then 160 for a minute. I'm probably gonna bump it up to start at 155 in about a week, depending on how I feel. I'm in no rush to get fast. This is all about accuracy and just being able to have control over what I'm playing. Accuracy and control, they really should be the guiding principles behind anything to do with this instrument, whether you're playing a technical exercise or whether you're practicing a groove. A few other things to consider. I'm, I'm using pads here. I've got a set of sound off pads here. Because I'm doing this in the morning, I don't really want to annoy people and I don't want to annoy myself. So sound off pads are good. And then the other thing to consider is, you know, how do you set up your room? So, you know, I've got a music stand here. It's got books on it that I'm currently working on. And then uh, I will also have my metronome here or sometimes I'll just use my phone metronome and just keep that on the floor, Tom. But the idea is that you wanna be able to walk into a room and start practicing. So even if I've been doing stuff in here the night before, I'll always make sure that I reset my room so that all I need to do is sit down, pick up the sticks, maybe turn on a couple of things if I need to. I will then return to the room after I've been to the gym or after I've had lunch and work on other things. I'm still working on building another practice routine that would follow uh, the 
sort of morning routine. Another thing to think about here is just keeping a diary of your practice. For example, if you're working on a particular set of exercises, write down what those exercises are, write down the date that you're practicing those exercises, and then write down the tempos that you're practicing those exercises at. So that, for example, if you had a bit of a layoff or you couldn't practice for a few days or a week, you can always come back to that diary and um, have a look at what tempos you were practicing at. You might start at those tempos and realize you might have to go back even further. So keep a practice diary. It's so critically important. Anyway, I really hope this information is useful to you and I hope that I encourage you to perhaps start your own little morning routine practice session. Uh, if you have a day job or you're at school or at college or anything like that, have a think about maybe just getting up an hour early and throwing this thing out before you head out of the house in the morning. Uh, trust me, you'll feel a lot better about yourself and you'll feel a lot better about life because this is kind of making me happier because I feel like I'm actually doing something. Uh, anyway, if you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you haven't done so already, subscribe and remember to hit that notification button bell situation so that you know when I've uploaded a video, which is every week. So until next week, have a great week and uh, I will see you all soon. Bye.